What's happening? I am starting a little bit early tonight, but I'm just making sure that the feed is in working order. So uh, we'll cover some things and we'll get started here at seven. Uh, but I have some things I wanted to cover with you first. So if you're here with me, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, let me know that you are here by writing in the chat and that would be if you're in um, YouTube you can see that below or sometimes it's on the side of uh, the window here that you're viewing me on. Let me know that you're here with me tonight. I hope that we'll have a little bit of fun tonight and uh, I've got some tips for you here. We're going to change things up just a little bit um, to start the segment off. Now if you're new here my name is Paige. I'm the chief pixel pusher and paintbrusher over at Gumption. And I also stream these classes over at the po Pocatello Art Center. So if you're tuning in from there, let me know. Um, this is just a great way for us to get together and uh, do a little painting. So uh, let's see. First things first. Uh, in Over in the chat window, you should see... I have a couple links there for you because this is going to be pertaining to some stuff that we're doing. First and foremost, there's a link for the image that we're going to be using for a reference tonight. And this is an image uh, that I found on Unsplash and I will share that image with you now. Uh, you can see it there uh, in the screen. And I did not do a tracing for this. I thought we would walk through the whole process of drawing these leaks. And uh, so go ahead and go over to that link, snag that. Now, if you can't see chat where you're at, do you have a description window below? Um, you can click on that little uh, triangle there and you can access the link there as well. Um, and you can just sketch along with me tonight. So that's the first item of business. Um, the second item of business is that we're going to be talking about ox gall just a little bit tonight. And I'm going to explain what that is. Uh, but if you want a more in-depth um, article on this, go ahead and click the link that's also in the chat window there too. Some of you are really into the science of these sorts of things. And so I didn't want to... Uh, leave you out there. So two links in the chat window over there. Um, so we are going to be painting this picture and my first painting looks a little something like this. And this is what we're going to be painting tonight. Uh, so Jan had requested in our last class that we do uh, something farmer's market related. And I tried to find some images that I liked that I thought might be uh, suitable for this class. It usually lasts about an hour. And uh, I kind of landed on this image of all things. And I thought this might be a great image for us to work on because it's deceptively simple. And uh, tonight we're gonna be really trying to shape those bulbs and to give it a little bit of life. And so hopefully you will enjoy this um, project with me tonight. Um, before I get to supplies, which I will get to here in a minute, um, I wanted to touch on a couple of tricks and tips that I uh, have been, you know, sort of take for granted. I've shared this with my class, my in-person class, but I think it's uh, valid to share with you here too. Um, one of which is, uh, this will really help you as you start painting. And I'm going to switch views here to my overhead view. Now you can see here I have taken my paints out of my paint box because it just makes it a lot easier for me to mix my paints while we are live on television here. But so this is the box that they usually live in. And in this box, I always have these cards of the paints that are in my paint set here. So I can easily reference it and look at it for the colors, uh, what might be suitable. And I recommend you do this too. Now I've cut this down to size so it fits in here really nicely. And when you travel with that, um, it's really handy. Especially, I think, if you're trying to paint along with me live, you can see mine are a mess. I need to redo them. but. If you're painting here with me live, maybe you don't have the colors that I have, 
but you can use this to find something that is similar to what I'm using. Um, you never have to have the exact colors that I have here. You just use what you've got. But that's one tip that I would give you uh, to work on in your free time when you're not painting. Okay, another tip that I have for you is if you live in the town that uh, I am from, where I'm living, you know that we only have one art store, and that is Hobby Lobby. And I was really looking for uh, a good travel journal to paint in, and I actually did today's assignment in, uh, in this journal to test it out. So if you want to go and paint some buildings downtown or do a little urban sketch crawl, paint crawl, this is a great little book to do it in. Uh, the paper's pretty good, it's pretty sturdy, and it wasn't too expensive, it's like 50% off. So um, check this out if you're looking for something small to take with you to paint plain air. So I'll just open this up because I will be keeping this here over on the side also as reference. Okay, so let's get to our supplies supplies window here. So tonight I'm using some core watercolor, some beam watercolors. Um, these are all colors that uh, you can mix if you want to too. So I'm using sap green. I'm using a green that I made, some paint that I made that's just kind of a middle grade green color. And you know how you can get green is by mixing blue and yellow. So we'll be using a green tonight. I'm using some cobalt teal for the background area on the table. If you don't have cobalt teal, if you have a phthalo color or some kind of turquoise color in your set of paints, that will work just fine. I'm also using sodalite, which is that paints gray color that I really like to use. I didn't use too much of that. So if you have a dark gray or maybe a black color, uh, check that out. You, might, you can use that um, interchangeably here. Um, also, I'm using a red color. This is uh, Beam's Fall Sugar Maple. It's got a little water in there. And it's just a really pretty rosy kind of red. So if you have an alizarin crimson or some kind of rose, um, that will work just fine. I'm also using another paint that I uh, made and it's called Buff Titanium. And you'll get a picture of that here in a minute it's like a really light tan color uh, and if you don't have buff titanium you can use a yellow ochre or a yellow watered down version of that and that should work just fine um, and what else I'm using my brown that I made as well so if you have a Van Dyke brown or a neutral tint or some kind of brown color that is just fine too so, and we might be using hairdryer tonight. So just know that might happen. I'll mute you as I'm using my hairdryer. You may also need to grab your hairdryer before we get started so you can use yours too. Okay, so I think without further ado, we should probably get started. Um, and well, I'm gonna be drawing, so I'll have you draw along with me tonight. This could be a little bit longer class. We'll just kind of have to see how it goes. Uh, one thing I want you to think about as we're going through this class, if you are students of mine or family or anyone who's tuning in because you want to learn a little bit about painting, um, I'm doing a new segment, I think, on this towards the end of our segment called Share Your Wins. So as you're painting or if you've had little successes, I want to hear about them and I want you to tell me about them. So uh, we'll hit that at the end of class tonight, but think about that if you have some wins that you would want to share. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna be drawing and you're gonna see I'm using uh, my iPad. I have this image on my iPad. Uh, let's see if I can access it. And so I'll be sketching this, so I'll have you sketch along with me. So make sure if you're tuning in a little bit late that you go to the link that is in chat there and you access it and you can download the, the image for yourself so you will be able to sketch along. 
So first, what I'm going to do is one thing that I really love is to use a little bit of tape. And I've learned that washi tape is really pretty good for masking off edges. There isn't quite anything like being able to pull your tape and see that nice crisp edge. So you can see I used it here because we're going to do a little wash. So, you know, if you don't have washi tape or some kind of masking tape, no problem. Um, it's just kind of fun to use a little bit of tape to have a clean edge and you don't have to really worry about your water in that situation. Now, I mean, if you guys find that you are fine to draw on your own and you don't want me to draw here, just let me know. Uh, I think it's been nice because I have... I know that I go pretty fast for some folks and uh, I want you to be able to keep up and be able to paint with me. So this is one of the reasons that I um, have started drawing these with you. Okay, so usually when I, I use this block, normally I tape it around the edges and such to kind of keep the paper down because sometimes it will come loose. That's pretty good. I'm gonna move my water here. So I'm just gonna start sketching out these guys. And we'll just start with overall shapes here. And it might look kind of funny as we start, but I'm gonna start kind of with these round bulbs. They're kind of more of an oval. Some of them are more round than others. This one's a little more round. And I kind of am looking, I'm lightly sketching. Let's see, I'm gonna bring it in here. See if that helps. So I'm lightly sketching. These don't have to be perfect. But this one's got kind of this uh, more bulbous round shape than this other one. And in my drawing classes, I've talked about drawing through. So uh, what that means is you can see I'm drawing this portion of the, the bulb all the way through, even though I have a, a bulb that's crossing over this way. And I wonder, let's see if I can put my reference image up here. Let's see, maybe this We'll see if this works. My computer is acting up a little bit. Whoops, no, not that. So I'm gonna uh, make the palette cam go away and we're gonna have this, maybe. Oops, come on. This way you can kind of view it while I'm drawing to. So I'm gonna kind of finish out this other bulb a little bit so it's a little you're able to see it. And then we've got this kind of round bulb in the background and you can see I'm gonna draw this through in the background too just so my placement makes sense. And I'm using a 2B pencil, just lightly sketching. And hopefully we don't have any cat company tonight, but it's very possible uh, as I forgot and I left my door open. So hopefully they are well behaved and busy this evening. Okay, so we can see that this guy, he kind of hits about here. So I'm gonna make him a little, scooch him over a little. Now my other onion looked a little like it was being squished. It was a little funky looking, so try to make this guy look okay. And I kind of draw the overall shape 
or try to here. Note the points and then where it might be a little bit wider. And kind of where, like, on this guy, I'm looking where they kind of hit, oops, hit each other. So I can be a little more accurate with my sketch here. Sometimes it's, you know, still lifes are, can be kind of hard. And if you kind of work with your overall shapes and how they interact with one another, you can get a more accurate drawing. Okay. So my drawing is a little bit off, but we're going to work with it here. Do the best that we can. I started a little bit early tonight because I have had technical difficulties the last two times that I've had class. And this tonight it went pretty well. So this guy has a little space in between them. And I have this great kneaded eraser that allows me to easily erase these marks without negatively affecting the paper that we will be painting on. So And I, you know, I can see where I could get a little closer here, but we're just going to kind of work with that. So if you're in chat and you want to say hello, let me know that you're in here with me. I imagine it looks like most people are out probably getting ready to go camping or go do some fun summer stuff. We had pretty nice weather here the last few days. Okay, so that's, I feel like that's okay to get started here. And I'm going to just use my kneaded eraser to tap a little bit so my pencil marks aren't quite as dark. Because once you've got paint on there, generally it is going to, those marks are going to stay put. So, okay. So one thing I wanted to tell you and talk to you about is that I'm going to use a little bit of the synthetic oxgall tonight. Now you don't have to use these mediums at all to paint. Um, in theory, this improves flow and wetting, and I was hoping it would make paint spread a little bit. And truly, I got this really to include with my, when I'm making my paint, my own watercolor paint, to see how it would work. But tonight I put this in my water. You just put um, two to five drops in your water, and it should uh, help your uh, paint flow across the page and improve that surface tension of your page um, and if you want to learn more about that please look in the comments over to the side I think of this video and there is a link to Golden's article on its mediums it, they have a few mediums and um, they also have this which adds gloss a little bit of gloss to your paint and it kind of does the similar things that the oxgall does but no oxes were harmed, or oxen, I should say, were harmed in the making of that. So, okay, so now on to the painting. So first, I'm going to start with the background, and I'm going to paint wet and wet 
I'm gonna test out. I think I'm gonna test out this brush. I think that other brush is too big. So this is a an, a ten size ten brush, and we'll make this reference go away. We'll bring back our palette cam here. There you are. Okay. So uh, probably before we even start, we need to mix up a little bit of paint here. So um, I'm going to mix up some of my buff Titan or Titan buff. It's a buff color. So if you don't have this color, then you can dilute some yellow, which I'm also going to do a little bit of yellow. So I've got that. I'm going to hit the Hansa yellow just a little bit here. You can see that's a lemony yellow. So if you've got a lemon yellow or a cool yellow, that'll work for you too. And I got these little dishes. Um, you can get them in a variety of places. I got these from Jackson's. But what I like is they stack. So for these sessions, I can... It's not taking up all my desk space. So I'm also going to mix up a little bit of sap green. And you can get green by mixing yellow and blue. So you don't have, this is what you call a convenience color. And I really enjoy this shade of green. So I have it in my palette. I've also I've got a couple of different greens. I have a green gold that looks very much more yellowy than the sap green. And then I have my own green that I mix. It is kind of a middle of the road green. And you certainly, if you don't have the time to mix all of those or that many colors, don't worry about it. I was really kind of just testing out my colors this week. So, and what else do we need? Then we'll also need some cobalt teal. So I'm gonna mix some of that. If you don't have cobalt teal, if you have a turquoise of some color, um, maybe a phthalo a green, on the green side of phthalo, I think. Okay. And we'll need to mix a little bit of our A rose color. Which I'm going to need in this dish, I think. Isn't that a really pretty color? And I'm just going to add just a little extra water here for this guy. Okay. Now I think we can kind of get started. So I'll put these over where the palette cam is and we'll keep these two close because we're gonna use those here pretty soon. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip into some clean water and I'm going to just lay down water here. We're gonna work wet and wet for the background and I'm gonna try to work pretty quickly. And that's why I have this um, ten, size 10 for the space that I'm working on. If you have a, a bigger area, then you'll wanna use a bigger brush. Because here, it seems like it dries so fast. And I wanna be able to get in there and work with it. Even in this area, it seems to be drying pretty fast. And, you know, I'm kind of experimenting with these brushes. Uh, these are the silver black velvet brushes, but what's really, I'm really liking about them is they have this point where you can really get into tight spaces, but then you can also flatten them out and really get some wide, 
wide parts of it too. So luckily for me, I have a little bit of color in my water. So it kind of helps me see uh, where I laid down the water. So you can kind of see, if I bring this a little bit closer, maybe you can see the water. There we go. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna dip into my cobalt blue and I'm just gonna kinda drop this in here. This is fast becoming one of my favorite colors this year this cobalt teal and you can kind of just see how it spreads and that is what I was hoping uh, the ox gall would do here the synthetic ox gall help it flow a little bit better one thing about core watercolors is what they use for their um, binder. It really makes the paint just come alive on the page. So I love that. But for some of my mineral um, based paints that I'm making, they don't, they sit, they kind of sink on the page and so by using this ox gall, the hope was that it would have them kind of move a little bit. So I might just drop in some more pigment here in places and let it kind of do its thing for a little texture. So next I'm going to dip into this rose color and kind of use it and let it spread too. We've got some of this wood here that has kind of this red feel in it. And if you feel like it's a little too wet, you can tap your brush on a napkin and suck up a little bit of that. Paint. And the theory is it kind of diffuses it, so it's like uh, when you are taking a photograph and what you have in front of you is a little bit more in focus and things in the background kind of fade out a little. Okay. And I have a little spot, if you look on the image, there is this dark area, I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of sodalite and let it kind of dis dispense through uh, my painting here. So I'll water it down a little. And we have this board here, you can see how it's in perspective. And we'll just tap it in there. Okay, so this is the point where I get out my hair dryer and I dry this background. And so I'm gonna mute you, hopefully it'll mute you. If not, be you're warned, you can go ahead and turn down your sound and I'll be back in a minute.
Welcome, Laurel, and everybody. I'm glad that you were able to join tonight. Uh, if you're looking for the reference image to sketch, you can go ahead and look at that in the comments or chats, the chat, or you can check it out down below in the description. There is a link there for you for that image, and I, I imagine it won't take you long to catch up. Um, also, uh, I am using a little bit of this synthetic ox gall, and I talked about it a little bit, but if you want to learn a little bit more about what this does, you can go ahead and hit the link that's also in the chat. This is not necessary for this project. It's just kind of an opportunity for us all to talk about it and learn about it. So check that out. And we started with this wash in the background. I worked wet into wet to get this kind of diffused background because we really want to focus here on the leaks. And uh, yeah, so they are deceptively, I wouldn't say that they're hard, but they're definitely, um, there's a lot to them that maybe when you first look at them, you don't see that. And so that's why it's fun to draw things that are readily available, like food, that kind of stuff, because it really does challenge you a little bit. Okay, so we've got that down. I'm going to move in with my buff color and my yellow color here. So if you are just tuning in and just starting with us, um, if you don't have this buff color, this is a Titan buff color, this is a paint that I made, um, you can use the yellow and just dilute it a little bit. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use a size 8 brush for this go. This might even be too big, but we will, we'll see here. So first I'm going to concentrate on these bulbs and I'm just going to go kind of around the edges to start. We want to reserve a little bit of white patch where I've kind of done that circle there. So I'm going to go around here. This is actually a color that I, uh, this is the first, I think the first time that I've used this color. And it's a really nice light color without being a white color. I'm going to use this in the background as well because we've got a bulb back here. And it looks like I covered up my bulb in the back, so I don't know if I'm going to worry about that so much. But we'll hit this guy too. He's got kind of like a little light patch here. So I'm going to try to reserve that little light patch. I'm going to soften it a little bit with my brush here so I don't have a hard edge or I don't want it. Then we can kind of go in with our kind of a yellow color here. and dab it along the outside here and get any parts that you missed. Well, I hope you had fun at the park, Laurel. Sounds like a great activity for today. Okay, might bring some of that yellow in here. And of course, in theory, this guy here will be darker, so I'm going to fill that in, I guess, but uh, we're going to go back in with a dark pigment there. What you can also do at this stage is we mixed up all our paint here. So you can use one of these green colors and start tapping it in down below if you want to give it that green cast. Now I've got some 
pigment kind of moving over here, which might work just fine, but I'm dabbed off a little bit of that pigment off my brush a little bit. I didn't want it to get too crazy. Soften this line a little. And just kind of keep tapping a little like this guy. He's a little, got a little more green that you can see in him in the bulb so we can kind of softly mix that in. And we can move that green right on up through here. Now this is a really light green. You can dilute your green. Because we're gonna build on this. So this stuff might dry a little bit. And we'll just kind of tap this in on the ends here. So I'm going to get in all of these that are this darker green. And actually, it might be helpful if I move this. And we kind of move this guy in so you can kind of see how we're going to use that as reference. Okay. And these can be uneven. Um, the loops are kind of like that. And we'll get this guy. He's a little thicker in the second drawing here, but. And, you know, this is a great time to talk about using your brush. So, in particular, this kind of brush where you have this thin point, you can really do some thin lines with that but you can really utilize your brush by starting out like here I'll start out thin but maybe I'll push down on that brush and flatten it out and drop that color so you can have a nice stroke of color there and this is great I mean for leaves and those sort of things you can really use the brush and make the brush do the work for you Okay, so that's good. I feel like that's a good base. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. Actually, I see an area here that I can come in with a little bit of this green too. I've got a little more pigment and water than I want, so I'm just gonna tap my brush and kind of draw down that color. So we get a little color in there. In theory, a lot of um, watercolors dry lighter, but core watercolor uh, isn't, it doesn't do that as much. It kind of stays true to color. And Lucy is in here with me, so she, hopefully she will behave herself. I see here where I, uh, <laughs> oh no. She's, no Lucy, gotta get down. I need to get down. Come on. <laughs> Lay down. Good girl. So I had to go in here and fix this spot where I um <laughs> Awesome. Hey, that's awesome, Jan. I, I tried to go with your uh farmer's market theme. And uh I, I looked them up because I'm like, are those really leaks? And they appear to be so. Hey, dude, lay down. So Lucy's going to be part of our painting club tonight. So I'm really glad that you could join Jan. It's nice to have you here. So thanks for tuning in. Okay. 
So for now, this is kind of, this is a good starting point. Then we can start adding more darks into this and really start giving it shape. So I think I'm gonna warm up, I don't know, I'm gonna warm up this area here and add some green here. So I have this great color, lay down. I have this great color and it's called bread. And I didn't put this on our supply list, but it's basically an apricot color. So you could dilute a, an orange or a, a kind of an orangey yellow. You can see here, maybe I can bring it over to the palette cam. You can kind of see it's a real lovely peachy color. So whenever I'm looking at things and I'm figuring out what colors I'm going to use to paint, I really take a look at, okay, you got to get down, dude. I know, I know, Let's go. Uh, I really look at the what's warm, what's cool. So as I'm looking at this image, especially on camera here, you can see this is kind of warm here and this is warm. So I want to warm those up a little bit. And that's kind of the fun part of painting in watercolor is really kind of deciding what colors you want and get to use. So I'm going to just do a little wash here along this side. <laughs> and here. maybe a little bit here. So I might kind of diffuse this just a little bit by softening these edges. This is definitely one of those more water, less paint issues or situations. So just a little bit of hint. And if you know me at all, you know how much I love hot pink. So I'm never above dropping in some hot pink, but I'll spare you on this one. <laughs> okay, so now that we have got that, I see a little bit of green down here that I could add a little bit more, and I think I am going to add a little bit of the sap green here to do that. So I'm going to use quite a bit of water and just a little bit of pigment and see what we can get here. And I think I'm going to move it kind of in this area that's sort of behind where the stock comes in here. Soften that edge a little. And you can always kind of tap, tap, tap in a little bit of color. So Jan, one of the things that I talked about a little bit earlier is uh, synthetic ox gall. And you're really the person who put it on my radar in the first place, ox gall itself. And so I have included in the links here uh, a link for you that, uh, at least for the golden paints, kind of explains what different mediums are that, that they create and use and it's kind of it's pretty interesting okay so I'm gonna move into the stock I see that we're kind of approaching 51 minutes which means nothing I won't stop this class at an hour but just so I can move along I suppose so you're not here all night so here I'm kind of I'm looking at this stock and I'm assessing kind of where these areas are. So I'm kind of drawing with my brush so I can kind of preserve some of these lighter areas here. And I will come back in with a darker color to separate out some of these areas. But for now, just kind of do our best 
and draw in what we can here. So this would be another place where you could really use your brush um, to your advantage. You start in with a uh, with your tip, and then flatten it, and bring out that pigment. It's great for working on leaves. And I this is kind of one of my goals. I think this year is to really utilize the brush more to do some of the work that it can do. So I think uh, in future classes, we'll do a little bit of floral work where it is a lot more about just brush strokes. It's not even about the drawing part of it as much as using the brush. So this guy, he's a little bit darker through most of this. We'll darken that up some. This guy can go a little farther down. Maybe. <laughs> and I'm just going to kind of draw this edge here so I can keep it in mind. My bulb's a little bit off, but that's okay. Aren't we all? So I'm going to let that kind of dry for now. And then I'm going to go in and darken some of these spaces in between. Um, like there's a space here and there's a shadow under here. And we'll add some shadows. So I'm going to do this a couple different ways. Now when you look at this image versus this image, you can see this really feels like it's floating. And when I'm teaching drawing, I try to always talk about the shadow because everything generally has a shadow, right? You've got your highlights, you will have a shadow in there. And so I'm just going to use a little bit of this cobalt teal, which we used in the background. No, stay down. Stay down. And I'm just going to go in with this color to do the shadow a little bit. And then I'm going to even make a little darker cast shadow. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Okay. If you ever wonder why I have cat hair all over me, then you'll know. It's just Lucy. Come on. No. I guess you're going to hang out on my shoulder. Too bad people can't see you. Jump down. <laughs> oh, Lucy, she's a lover. When it's, you know, in the evening time, she wants to be on somebody's lap. So we'll just, you're going to be a good girl and hang out, so. So you can see this sort of starts making this, uh, it starts grounding that. And then I'm going to dip into my sodalite. That might be a little too dark for what I want here. A little bit of water. I'm kind of, should be able to kind of tap it in. So if you have a Payne's gray or some sort of darker color, whether it's a neutral tint or moon glow or something. So I'm just kind of softening this edge so it kind of goes into this cobalt teal nicely. 
And if you look at the image, you've got kind of a, a really strong cast shadow just under here. You can always go in and clean that up too. And then I'm going to go in between this area to define this other bulb. And I'm going to get a little more pigment in there. And it really starts giving it a little bit of shape. And like you can see here, I've got the bead here. I'm going to just move that bead up there because it'll be darker up there. You can also kind of use this to clean up those edges if you need. Okay. Do you think we it's starting to look like something? <laughs> so this back... Uh, leak back here, I can add a little bit of green to that. And that helps give a little shape as well. And I do have this great, this is a great, um, it's actually a gouache and it comes from Beam, but it's kind of a nice little uh, opaque kind of green color too. So if you have something like that, that'll work. I'm going to dip into my brown here. This is a brown that I made, so it's not... Um, something that's probably on your palette, but if you have a Van Dyke brown or a neutral tint, you can use it too. And I just feel like this area needs just a little more TLC to make it a little more rounded. So I'm just going to kind of... go into these areas, soften it up just a little bit. Okay. And at the bottom of this one leak, you've got like a little, this guy here. So you could go in there with a darker color. If you don't have a brown, it doesn't matter and just give him a little bottom. Of course we have, all of these brown dirt spots on these guys, so you can add those too. So they have that fresh out of the garden feel. Now, if you, uh, as you are painting or as you are painting and you accidentally go over this light spot, don't worry, you can lift that out with a little clean water on your brush, a little scrubbing and a little pressing of a napkin. You can get your light highlight there. Oh, you're so helpful, Luz. Okay. So now we're gonna um, we're gonna intensify our green, our dark part. Again, we will uh, approach the table and some of these green veins that are in uh, our leaks here. So how I got a darker green was I took my sap green and I mixed in a little soda light. With that so if you can see over here my soda light is this dark kind of Payne's gray color 
and we'll just use this as another a darker uh, portion of our leek. But first, I'm going to go in with a really thin brush. Uh, if you don't have a thin brush, that's fine. You can use something like this that has a pointy tip. Uh, I'm a big fan of these skinny brushes, uh, so I've got a few of them. So make sure you tap off water off of them because they will d dump a drop on your painting where you really don't want it. So with this thin brush, I can get some really nice lines. So we have and it's really just very satisfying to paint with these. Got a little too close there. It's kind of relaxing. These are all kind of coming out of the same area, so I will try to keep that in mind. And you can see here we had a little wowie with our background that kind of bled into uh, our leak here. And one of the reasons I like these brushes is you can kind of clean up those edges and give it a definition if you need to. And these kind of go, they lighten up as they go down. This is where this guy looks a little bit lopsided. He's kind of off kilter a little. But by doing these lines, you also are giving this shape. And I think I'm going to just lightly kind of go around this edge just a little. And so I'm going to continue this into, I'm going to go into this darker color for this one in the background. We'll darken up here, so I'm not too worried about these lines. And then we'll get this guy. He's got kind of more defined. This guy back here. Okay. So I'm going to use this guy also because you can see my shadows looking pretty good there, but it's a little bit darker under this guy. See if we can ground him a little bit more. Oops. And we also have a shadow that falls underneath here. So if you look at your reference photo, there is a shadow here. How does that look there? Oh, Lucy, you just need to be on camera for a minute. Hey, hey, this is Lucy. <laughs> She's helping. She's a helper. 
And I think I'm going to go back into this because I want it just a little bit darker. As you can see, I'm making all these decisions kind of on the fly and um, as you go along, but you can see how that makes quite a bit of difference. We'll see how it dries. Okay, so I'm going to snag a different brush. This is a size six brush that I have been using a little bit tonight. And I'm just gonna take this darker green color because there are areas that are a little bit darker. This area, it's kind of got a little dark spot that goes over. Just kind of work my way around because we have these areas that are more defined. We have some dark areas that separate here. Little shadow. Let's see if it shows up on camera there. I kind of didn't draw those in very well, but we're not looking for perfection. We're looking to have a good time, right, Luce? You have to stay down. So if you have questions for me, now's a great time to pop them in uh, chat here. And it can just be, you know, in general questions or um, about spe this specifically, what we're working on. Okay, so this guy's a little bit darker up here. And I'm just moving around. You know, you kind of always spot things and I kind of fix it always on the fly. I'm definitely using my reference here where I can. I need a little bit darker. So today I was kind of testing out uh, the synthetic ox gall and these brushes, just really enjoying the act of just making leaves. And it was very relaxing. So if you find that you're frustrated with watercolor a little bit, I recommend trying that just to enjoy the process that you're, you know, just making those leaves or whatever it is, just marks, checking to see how the the paint works with water and different techniques. So here I'm kind of tapping in that dark color because I want it to go along that line. So I'm creating like these little tiny beads of pigment there. And mostly when I'm painting, I am doing this kind of layered approach. Now, some people are really great at um, getting the paint to blend the way they want and just playing with the color. And I aspire to have some classes like that for us in coming months. Yeah, I'm just kind of going with the flow there. <laughs> I 
And then I can just kind of continue layering these colors, creating a little depth, because that's really what we want, is we want to feel that roundness and fill the bulb as if it were, you know, in front of us. So I keep seeing places where I think, oh, I could round that out a little bit, make it appear a little more round. Lots of edge softening. Okay. So how do you guys feel about uh, painting some produce? I don't think this is exactly what you had in mind, Jan, but um, I think in coming weeks, I really do want to do some landscapes. So. so I'm looking at this and I see, so you can kind of see the difference between these two. I really feel like this is floating a lot and this is grounded and if you can see the difference here, this is really because this is a little bit darker. Of course, we've created perspective in this painting where we haven't quite created it yet by using the table. So that will be next. But I think I'm just gonna add a hair more. Shadow. Just gently underneath there. Let's see if that does the trick. Okay, Luce, you're gonna have to get down. Down you go. Or up you go. Up there. No, not up here. Let go. <laughs> if only you could see. Off camera. I'm gonna switch the scene just so you can. Lucy. <laughs> Lucy the helper. All right, so in order to make this look dimensional, when you look at your image, you can see how this is sort of a uh, one point perspective when you're looking at our reference image, where these lines are, where the slats are. So when we put those in our paintings, it will really give it a little bit more grounding. And you can really have some fun with this too. So I'm going to use my sodalite or my dark Payne's gray, navy, dark color, whatever you're using. And I am going to do a little bit of water in here just so it's not too dark. We can always go darker, but it's harder to take away. And I'm just going to try to draw this line. Kind of curves a little bit, but we'll do one here. And then we have one here. So uh, I have water there and it's spread, but it's not an emergency. If this happens to you, you can just take a paper towel and dab it. We'll see if it will let me draw that in there or not. Okay. And then I have this other one. This one kind of goes on in the background. So if I were to draw through, I can kind of gauge where that would be. Of course, it will be more diffused in the background. And then we will do this one here. Get down. Uh -uh. Get down. I know. Get down. So 
So if you feel like you've gotten a line that's too dark, just tap your brush in water, pull a little bit of the water out of your brush and you can kind of suck it up that way so it's not too, too dark. So now it starts grounding a, a little bit. And you can see in our reference image, we have all of these areas that have this wood where it's kind of in this red color. And you can play with a thin brush like this and add those in. And I'll just do that a little bit. We've got some of this great uh, fall maple pink color in here. And you can just dilute things a little bit so you're not you don't have buyer's remorse. And that's what I kind of love about these brushes is that you can lightly create texture without it becoming too distracting. Of course, we don't have to add all of this and we won't tonight but it just kind of it's one way to get a little texture in there and we definitely have these areas that have a little bit more texture and are a little darker this whole area. I can probably use a bigger brush for this part. But my pigment is, you know, I'm using a pretty watered down pigment, although it's not that watered down in the image. I want these guys to be steal the show and uh, so we'll just kind of try to diffuse this a little bit in the background. Okay. What am I forgetting here? You could continue working these leaves. My leaves don't, they look a little off here, but uh, you could continue using light and darks here. Give them a little bit of shape there. Just see where the light is. So the most fun part about any painting is pulling the tape. It's just like one of my uh, guilty pleasures. And I often tape my uh, artwork when I work in this way or I'm doing a painting that is either going to a client or it's uh, going to be a print of some kind, just to have that nice space to work with. Um, it just makes it look really clean. So we're going to pull tape today because it's one of the most satisfying things you can do. And uh, I just talked about this when we started today. But one of the things that I would like to start doing uh, as we do these classes and you're tuning in, for those of you who know me and want to comment in the comments, um, I want to hear about your wins. So whether it be painting or otherwise, but definitely if it's a painting win, um, I think that's great to share because I, I kind of was, I was thinking about it today and I did this painting a few years ago and it's one that I just really did not like at the time. It was a landscape 
and I thought it was terrible. And then upon looking at it again years later, it's really not that bad. But we're always the hardest on ourselves and our work. And so it's always good to hear good news. So if you have some wins, go ahead and put them in the comments there. I think that's going to be my win for the day. See how nice that looks? It looks nice and clean. So you could scan that if you want to make cards out of it or do something like that. Or if you just want to give it to somebody, then they have kind of like a faux matte kind of look around that. And it's very nice. So let's see. There are a few things that I want to touch on before we wrap up tonight. If you have questions, please put them down in the bob in the chat thanks colin uh you liked the washes so i'm assuming like this part thank you that's a nice way to um get a background uh and to work that way um you can see i have some spots here that i could go back in and finish but it's an easy way to let the paint do the work for you because that's what that's what's great about watercolor is it has the capacity to do all this work for you. Um, unlike oils, I think watercolor is different that way. Okay, so let's see. Um, share your wins down below. I know we have a little bit of a time delay here, so if you're hanging out and you just want to talk about watercolor a little bit, uh, throw that down in the chat. I am so excited that you're here with me. I appreciate you tuning in every week and um, giving me your two cents and, uh, you know, just being here and hanging out in this weird quarantine time where we are safer to be separate. Um, again, if you want to check out mediums, um, of course, I'm a fan of core. I'm not trying to sell you on mediums. I'm not uh, associated with Core in any way, or, or Beam for that matter. But um, they have some fun mediums that you can play with. And I used the Oxcall a little bit today uh, just to see how it would work. I really am more interested in putting these in my paints so I can figure out how to make them work similar to Core, but I can make my own paint. And there's a link in the chat so you can check out an article on that. That's really informative and interesting if you're interested in mediums for watercolor. So before we wrap up, I want to uh, say a couple thank yous to my patrons who are always on this call and um, great about supporting me and, you know, throwing out ideas when uh, we need some ideas. So Colin and Laurel, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being Patreon backers. Um, helps me do this and um, bring this to you. So thank you. Uh, check out uh, our Patreon there because we have, I think, a couple videos in there that are not listed here on uh, this channel that are just for you. And I will be adding more content to that all the time. So, And if you have specific requests, I will take those and make a note of that. Uh, I think our next... we got, I've got a couple of class uh, project ideas to put in our Patreon and one deals with um, environmental landscape and one deals with monsters. So look for that in coming weeks this month. Uh, if you want to find me on the interwebs and uh, want to contact me, most of you know how to contact me, but if you go to ihavegumption.com, you can contact me there. And I'm always open to suggestions for classes. So if there's something specific that you want to see, we can make that happen. Um, I still have some farmer's market ideas in mind. So don't give up on me, Jan. <laughs> we'll find something there that's more markety, that is more of like a landscape um, kind of idea. And uh, I don't know. I know, I think, Colin, you've probably been here since the beginning. But some of you who turned in, tuned in a little bit later and may not go back and watch this video because you were here with me. Just wanted to share, um, you can see this painting is the painting there in the corner, but I found this nice little journal. There are some that are very expensive that are for watercolor, 
but this is a pretty good little journal. The paper is pretty good and it's great for traveling when you go to the lake or to the park. You can use this to paint while you're there. And I found this here at Hobby Lobby, so I was really surprised to see that they had a little tiny book. And what's great about these books are you can lie them flat so you don't have to all constantly be fighting the notebook. So if you want to travel and do some urban sketching, they have uh, something like this and they probably have some in your area too at your local art store. Well, thanks guys. Thanks for tuning in. I love these classes and I love hearing from you and seeing that you're here. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you find you have any other additional questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments or send me a note and I would be happy to answer those for you. And uh, yeah, until next time, keep painting, keep being creative and uh, finding ways to kind of bring some joy into your day. So I will see you next time.